Magic Detective, starring the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone. He tells you the inside story of the Aztec Fire God. And right after the story, Blackstone will explain tricks that you yourself can perform. Reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest living magician. Stand by for Blackstone, the magic detective. Uh, shall I hang it here, Blackstone? Yes, yes, it looks lovely. Uh, here's a nail. Uh, is it even? Yes, that's fine. Okay, here goes. What on earth are you doing perched up on that step ladder, Rhoda? I'm hanging this tapestry. Oh, darn it, the nail came out. Oh, catch the tapestry, yeah, Blackstone. Right, right, oh, right, catch me. Watch out. <laughs> well, as a picture hanger up a Rhoda, you're a better magician's assistant. Uh, thanks for catching me, Don. Not at all. It was a pleasure. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, Blackstone, what is that tapestry you and Rhoda were just hanging? Oh, it's Mexican. See, there is Quetzal, the god of fire among the ancient Aztecs. They always thought that Quetzal was a bird with fiery feathers. Beautiful. What do you use the cloth for now, Blackstone? Show him, Blackstone. Yeah, watch this, Don. I throw the shawl over my arm like this, and I bring out a bowl of fire. Great Scott. For a moment there, I thought it was real flame coming out of that bowl. Here's the bowl, Don. You hold it. Ouch! Jumping, Jehoshaphat, it is real flame. Of course it is. Blackstone, didn't he look just the way Quetzal did when you handed him that bowl of flame? Uh, yes. Yes, he did, Rhoda. You mean you and Blackstone have met this bird, uh, Quetzal, the fire god? <laughs> Come on, Blackstone. Tell him about it. Well, Rhoda and I were driving to Mexico City one winter night, and uh, night was coming on. We weren't any too sure of the way. Golly, it's getting dark, Blackstone. Yes, I know. We've got at least two hours more driving, though, before we get to Mexico City. <laughs> it's eerie out here at night. Sort of eerie. You think the place is haunted, Rhoda? Oh, of course not. Only... Only what? It seems so lonely. Oh, look, over there to the right, there's a light. Yeah, so there is. Well, what about it? Well, why don't we stop and see if the people there can put us up for the night? Uh, we could drive on to Mexico City in the daylight tomorrow. Rhoda Brent, you are scared. Oh. Well... We'll stop there and see if we can stay. Who is it? Who's there? Oh, I'm Blackstone. This is my assistant, Rhoda Brent. We're driving through to Mexico City. It's very late. We thought we'd stop and see if I could put you up for the night. Oh, could you? There's something about the loneliness of this country. I know. I've lived alone here for over a year. Come in, come in and welcome. Uh, this is an interesting place you have here, Mr. Shelby. Thank you. Years ago, it used to be a rich hacienda. But now it's just a roof for a mining engineer, myself. Oh, is there a mine around here? There's supposed to be. You say that in an odd way, Mr. Shelby. The whole thing is odd. Listen. Oh, what is it? What's that drumming? It's unearthly. Those are the natives calling to their god Quetzal, the firebird. Uh, what do you mean? Because of those drums, I don't know whether there is silving here. I can't even survey the place. Why not? I can't get any workers. The guard tells them not to work here, that the pool over there under the lee of the hill is his home and must not be disturbed. The guard tells them that? So they say. Of course, I haven't seen the guard myself or gone to one of their ceremonies. It's death to an unbeliever if he's found there. Oh, I, I knew there was something funny about this place. All night the drums go on and on, pounding and pounding, night after night. Sometimes I think I'm going insane. Then dawn comes, and the drums fade away. But the next night, they're back, pounding and pounding. Blackstone, 
Blackstone, did you sleep well last night? As well as I could with those drums beating. And now that it's morning, it seems funny to think how scared we were last night. We? Oh, yes. Uh, look, Rhoda, I want you to take the car and drive on to Mexico City. Without you? Yes. But why? I think I'll stay here a few days with Shelby. I think someone should be here. The option on this property lapses in a week. And if he doesn't get the place properly surveyed by then, the owners won't renew. Well, what's that got to do with you? Nothing, nothing. But then why... Uh, will you do as I say, Rhoda? Oh, yes, Maestro, if you put it that way. This just doesn't make sense, Blackstone sending me off like this. Going on. I'll bet it has something to do with those drums, and I don't like it. I'm going back. Oh, the house is dark. Blackstone! Blackstone! Oh, he isn't here. Oh, he's down by the Aztec pool watching for kids now. I think I'll go down there, too. Oh, oh, they're dancing. Oh, those natives. Hundreds of them rising and turning. And the drums. But I can't see Blackstone anywhere. There's Shelby. There's no one here but the natives and me. Ah! Oh, you take your hands off me. Let go of her. Oh, Blackstone, be careful. Run while you still have time. Uh the fire god. Quiet, Rhoda. Oh, quiet. The god, the fire demands that these humans be delivered to him as sacrifice. Unless they bring gifts, many gifts. Has the girl any gift for Quetzal? Nothing. Oh, I've got my shawl. It has your picture on it, Quetzal. It's, it's beautiful. See? Ah, throw her into the lake. That shawl is useless. Stop. I have a gift for you, Quetzal. Give me the shawl, Rhoda. I put it over my arm. And there. A bowl of your own fire, Quetzal. Here, take it. Oh! He's human. He's not a god at all. The fire burns your Quetzal. He is no god. He's a human. Grab him. Grab him. Don't come near me or I'll burn you with my sacred fire. Oh, let's go. They're falling back. They won't touch him. They're frightened. Throw the unbelievers into the pool! Take your hands off us! Into the pool, I say! Out of the air, I have produced this hen's egg! If you don't stand back, I'll set the pool on fire! <laughs> Quetzal is not afraid of your threat! You asked for it, Quetzal! Oh, the pool is on fire! It's blazing! Get back! Get back, Rhoda! Before you burn! Oh, the flames! They're burning, Quetzal! Who was it? Who was pretending to be the Aztec god? It was Shelby, the miner. He'd found silver on the land and wanted the option to lap so he could buy it cheaply. That's why he terrified the natives every night, to keep them from working. Well, there's one thing I want to ask you, though. Hmm? How did you make the pool catch fire by tossing an egg into it? Oh, it wasn't really an egg, but a large pellet of potassium. I guess I've forgotten my chemistry. What does potassium do? It generates hydrogen out of the water so fast that the stuff ignites. There was enough potassium in that egg to draw all the hydrogen out and ignite the whole pool. Lots of magicians use potassium in their act. And so another mystery was solved by magic. Well, it's my turn tonight, Don. Your turn for what, Rhoda? To mystify you. With Blackstone's help, of course. Maybe it's the other way about, Rhoda. I'll do the mystifying with your help. But suppose we work the old black magic and let Don decide for himself who fooled him. Hey, what is this? Some black magic. Just what Rhoda said. All right, Rhoda. Let's begin. Well, first I turn and face the corner of the room, so I can't see what's going on. That's right. Now, Don, you point to some object lying around, and I'll have Rhoda tell you what it is. All right. I'm pointing to something. Good. Now, I'll point to various objects and ask Rhoda to say yes or no as I name those objects. Ready, Rhoda? Ready. Is it the ashtray? No. Is it the doorknob? No. Is it the wastebasket? No. Is it the telephone? No. 
Is it the clock? Is it the clock? Yes. Say, that's right. The clock was the thing I picked up. What was it, luck? Not luck, Don. It was magic. And black magic, Don. Real black magic. I'd like to see you do it again. All right, Don. In a few minutes, we'll be back to repeat the trick. We'll explain it if you don't catch on. And I'll bet he won't catch on. You ready for another experiment in black magic, Don? I'll say I am. Have Rhoda turn around. All right, I'll turn you around. I look like stone. I've weighed several objects here on the table. I'm not saying how many. And are you picking one? Yes. That's it right there. I'd like to hear Rhoda name. All right, she will. You ready, Rhoda? Ready. Is it the watch? No. Is it the pencil? No. Is it the pen? No. Is it the coin? Yes. <laughs> See? Right again. Well, she was right, and I'm baffled. All right. We'd better explain it. It's black magic, Don. How do you mean black magic? Because we use black objects. Always, just before calling a chosen object, you call something black. Remember, Don, when you picked the clock? Yes. Well, in asking Rhoda about various objects, I said, is it the telephone? And since the telephone is black, that was my cue. Therefore, my next question was, is it the clock? And I said, yes, of course. Well, now I'm beginning to catch on. Now, what about the second time when you repeated the trick? Well, I called the names of a few objects, and then I asked, is it the fountain pen? And since the fountain pen was black, I knew that Blackstone would call the name of your chosen object next time. And that's what I did. I asked about the coin. And Rhoda said yes, because it followed the black object. Exactly. That's why we call it black magic, Don. And now that we've explained it to you, our listeners can try black magic for themselves. I hope you like that trick, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time... This is Blackstone saying good magic and goodbye. Be with us next time when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of... The Missing Palmist, and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician. <laughs>